apart from knowing what you have to say, yeah. so no nonsense comes out of your mouth, yeah. understanding the task at hand, taking the information and you know using that again information and insight are two different things but using that information and converting it into a usable insight and then what you have to do is you have to take this all of this and then you have to wrap a little bit of magic around it and then now you have the this task of trying to convince the client that this is a great idea uh, to buy so it always helps when you have all that I said before uh, and then present it with conviction. Uh, sometimes theatre is required uh, to do that, to make a point. Uh, and I remember this, it was a pitch uh, that the agency at that point that I was in, that I was in, we were invited to do a pitch uh, for a medicinal tonic. You know, basically, you know, drink it helps you maintain your balance, gives you more energy, more vitality, and so on and so forth. And of course, we know, you know, usually these tonics are uh, advertised and marketed to busy professionals on the go with no time for exercise and eating right. So I remember we were in a hotel meeting room and we were doing the presentation. And I whispered to my then planner to say, when I look at you, at the point that I'm going to make this point, please call my mobile phone. And I left my mobile phone in my pocket, not on silent. So as I was presenting my case to the clients to talk about the environment that all of us live in, you know, no time for uh, family, to eat well, to exercise well, my phone rings. And of course, seated in the audience is my regional director, my MD and everybody, everybody went, <laughs> what on earth? Why didn't Hua turn off his phone? And I picked up my phone and I pretended to talk to my wife. And I told my wife, I'm sorry dear, I cannot speak to you now because I'm in a very important meeting. And I put the phone down. Of course, it wasn't my wife. Yeah. But then I quickly made the point to the client to say, how many times have we done that to the people who we love? Now, if we don't take care of ourselves, who's going to take care of the people who we love? And then, of course, after that, I presented all the work and needless to say, we won the pitch. How about you? What's your standpoint? I'll bring Kartik along for my presentation, you know? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, you know what, uh, I'll uh, echo a lot of things that uh, Hua spoke about. Uh, to me, if you ask me to choose uh, effective strategies to sell creatives, uh, to me the first strategy is this. First, you have to be sold. Mm. You know? Mm. Uh, you have to buy into it. You must immerse into it. it. You must embody it. You must feel it so much that you're able to infect another person with this idea. See, when you're so passionate about something, right? Uh, you've done the due diligence. You've immersed yourself. And when you just share it to it could be a client, you know. Uh, the client should feel there is something he knows mm. that I probably don't know. The client should have a self-doubt, mm. right? That is the strength, passion, conviction with mm. which you must share your enthusiasm. See, you've got to remember this. A client doesn't buy a creative idea at the end of the day. A client actually buys your enthusiasm at the end of the day, right? Uh, which is why a great idea can be killed with poor enthusiasm, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. You can kill it long before the client mm. kills it, Absolutely. right? Uh, to me, the second one is, uh, uh, it's the due diligence, mm. you know? Mm. Yes, idea is subjective, let's face it, you know? It is subtle. 
but you must do the due diligence you must understand the market right you must understand the competitor you must understand the history of this company right and uh, you must demonstrate professional competence mm -hmm. right i I've, i've seen a lot of outstanding creative people that sell without real substance other than pure creative flair it's not going to fly mm. right uh it may not fly so uh, you know that due diligence substance and professional competence there's no substitute for that mm. that's why great creative people they know the facts and the evidence inside, inside out. out yeah right mm. they literally marinate it mm. okay Uh, like he does like mm. why is uh, you know why i consider him uh, an outstanding creative person is uh, uh, he does his due diligence on the other side of things yeah. you know on the facts on the research on the customer and so on and so forth you know? to me there's a third uh, you know a strategy and this is very important okay uh this is to me where the rubber hits the road it is you have to understand that you are a creative person coming from probably an artistic background musical background theatrical background cinema background design background who cares but you're a creative person the person sitting on the other side of the table is not a creative mm -hmm. person he's not an artist the other person is an entrepreneur a business person probably finance or marketing or i don't know what engineering is his or her background i always make it a point to speak the language of the client I take a right brain product which is the creative product but I use left brain technique and language to sell. Mm. You know if what I'm saying makes any sense to you. Yeah yeah. Right? Speak the customer's language. Yes, right? I talk like an engineer mm. if I see an engineer. Mm. Right? Uh because then the engineer connects with me. Mm. Because I want to I want to connect with the with the engineer inside that person. Yeah. Right? Uh see after all empathy is the basis uh Uh, of any outcome yeah which is any human outcome right mm. um now related to this is another very important thing i'm going to say you, know, you got to use metaphors that they connect like uh, you know if you ask me to sell pretty woman i don't know whether you heard of this film richard gear and julia <laughs> roberts okay it was an iconic film you know uh and how do i say the story there is this prostitute who meets this rich guy and he falls for her and they get married <laughs> not going to say <laughs> my friend you know. <laughs> they say get out of the way <laughs> in typical american style you know but the metaphor was this is a modern day cinderella story mm. this is a poor girl who's got a heart of gold she's beautiful and but she's in circumstances which are terrible mm. right as a hooker standing on the streets at night you know but she's got the heart of gold she's mm. a cinderella mm. and then she sees the prince so you see it's a modern day cinderella i get it that i get mm. right but if we say there's a hooker hanging around in la and this rich guy picks her up in a Cadillac mm. <laughs> dead on the water mm. right mm. so you got to talk in metaphors that they can relate to mm. right